In the next demo, we will cover moving data from multiple cloud applications into an employee data hub that is hosted on an Oracle database. Uh, let's go back to the data consistency project in Mercado and look at the folder with automations for cloud apps to on-prem database. The connector provides multiple ways to monitor events and changes to data in NetSuite in the form of triggers. For this demo, we will choose new updated standard records batch trigger. This will give us the ability to fetch multiple employee records instead of processing one at a time. The trigger setup provides full control in choosing the time period for fetching data, which can be easily set up by using Workaro's time machine feature. The trigger gives access to all standard and custom objects, standard fields and custom fields in NetSuite. For this demo, we'll choose the standard employee object. In step two, we are using the variable in Workaro to store the list of employees fetched by the trigger. The schema for the variable is defined by adding one field at a time or just importing a JSON schema from the NetSuite object. Once the schema has been defined, I can easily access the data tree and map the values from the NetSuite trigger to this variable. These rule sets are stored in a lookup table in Workaro, which is persistent and can be dynamically accessed and updated. Applying these rules requires complex conditions and logical evaluations. Hence, we are using JavaScript for efficiency. Users could use Ruby or Python instead. Next, we will iterate through one employee record at a time using the for each condition in Workaro and look up the application access details for each employee record in Okta. The employee data and their application access information is then added to the employee applications table in Oracle. In the next step, we get data applications not supported by Okta in the form of a CSV file that's available on Google Drive. In step 13, we are creating a table using Workaro Collections, an in-memory SQL database to merge employee data from NetSuite and application access data in CSV. Step 15, execute SQL transformations to join the two disparate data sets. The output of this join operation is then loaded into the employee application table in Oracle. Status updates are posted to Slack for the ops team to monitor. We have also built an exception flow in steps 18 through 21 to add comments in NetSuite to flag bad employee data. Now let's look at the runtime view for this recipe. For that, we'll go to the jobs tab and click on the latest run of this recipe. Here you can see this job was run successfully and it took about three seconds to load the data from NetSuite into the Oracle database. Now just to validate that this particular run actually loaded data into the Oracle table, let's pick a sample employee record, in this case, the employee with internal ID 3462 and look for this employee ID in the employee application table in Oracle. This is the customer hub schema in the Oracle database and we're going to query this employee application table. So we got plenty of rows. Now let's look for the employee ID 3462. So as you can see, for that particular employee, a list of applications that they have access to have been loaded. 